James Tracy was so far ahead of us by simply saying we need more answers, we need more questions. I don't think we heard everything yet. That's how we started out. But then the media sucked it up, and they turned it on him, and they used it every way. And it just kept it's just like a snowball coming down the mountain. And he just couldn't get out of the way. He tried by using a lawsuit, you know, freedom of speech, but it's, that wasn't about freedom of speech. The university knew what they were going to do right off the bat. I retired from the public school system in 1999 from Seminole County Public Schools, school district of 65,000 students, and I think I worked in almost every capacity, from a head football coach, a baseball coach, a teacher, and as soon as I got married, had my first child, I realized I wasn't making enough money, so I went into school administration, which most of us as coaches do. And then in my last five years at the job, I was asked to be the, the school district safety director. I was asked by the superintendent to come in. And that was back in 1994. We're starting to see shootings in our school district, stabbings, drug dealings, gang members. And we as a district weren't prepared here in Central Florida to deal with that. There wasn't an emergency management plan. When I took that job, where's the plan? There was no plan. So the superintendent and the school board said, Mr. Halbig, write a plan. How do we deal with an active shooter? How do we respond? What is our responsibilities? I can't help law enforcement. They've got their own plan. And as you can see recently in Parkland shooting, it failed miserably. The national news media is so remiss in reporting the facts that we as a people deserve today. And I think they are important in our history. It's the news media who really helped us learn about issues that we need to work on and work with, okay? Now, even the president of the United States, I've never seen this as a 71-year-old, where the president of the United States actually says, you're fake news. I look at Sandy Hook, I look at Parkland, I look at Boston, I look at the Pulse and Club. I look at them as all as being illusions. 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 Just as when Wolfgang Halbig began asking questions about the Sandy Hook school shooting and his reputation was suddenly challenged, so too was Professor James Tracy's reputation. He had previously expressed anti-establishment theories about highly controversial events like the JFK assassination, the September 11th attacks, and others. What about questioning the media reporting of or official account of the Sandy Hook school shooting in particular is so unique? Why did that subject, more than any other, lead to such a backlash from both the media and fellow academics? James Tracy was later fired for daring to share his personal views on his blog. Anyone who looks at the evidence honestly would agree. Florida Atlantic University wants you to believe Dr. Tracy was insubordinate and was fired for not completing an outside activities form. That matter is currently under appeal. The firing of a tenured professor for trumped up or pretextual reasons was just another step along the path toward total censorship. In recent months, we've seen the issue of free speech in the era of social media become mainstream news. The controversial founder of InfoWars, Alex Jones, made the headlines recently when he was sued for what are described as, quote, malicious statements and, quote, unspeakable lies, unquote. This follows the wider trend of equating speech with violence. IMS came along. It was a great teaching tool for me knowing that there's other researchers out there, that I'm not just on my own, okay, that people actually love their country. They have questions and they want facts and they want their questions answered. It should have been shown at a film festival. People need to see it and let them decide for themselves. But the people in IMS and those that were 
in the documentary, great questions. All you had to do is watch it. If I want to fire you, I'm going to fire you not for what you're saying or what you're blogging. I'm going to fire you because you broke the rules somewhere, someplace. Whether Professor James Tracy used university equipment to conduct personal business after hours or checked out books of personal interest with his employee library card, to fire a tenured professor with an excellent track record who was well respected by fellow professors and students for doing so would be an obviously disproportionate reaction. One might even call it a pretext to fire him for something else. And it's obvious that something else was to question the official record of events that are so important to so many groups in their plans for America. This story of injustice and that of Alex Jones and so many other valuable independent voices who are at this very time in history experiencing the loss of their freedom of speech is evidence of one of their most far-reaching plans, the plan to limit your freedom of association to censor and criminalize your speech. Are we not the same, and do we not share the same basic goals of ensuring the liberty and freedom of all people? Do we not oppose injustice and the denial of people's rights? If so, then let's put aside all differences, doubts, and suspicion, and get motivated to join with us as one people in solidarity. Let's stop this campaign to silence us. If you still think it's possible James Tracy was fired for neglecting to fill out a form and check a box, then be sure to watch the full documentary coming soon. <laughs>